materials can exist in different physical states. The three states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. So when we talk about the physical state of a substance, we're talking about whether it's a solid, a liquid, or a gas. It's important that you understand how the shape and volume of solids, liquids, and gases are affected by their containers. Gases take the shape of their container and spread out across the container's entire volume. It can be hard to see this because many gases are invisible. These containers may look empty, but they are actually full of the mixture of gases that we call air. But not all gases are invisible. Chlorine is a gas with a light green color. Below are three containers of chlorine gas that are all different shapes and sizes. The gas is taking the shape of the containers and spreading out across their entire volume. Liquids take the shape of their container. But notice, there's no liquid at the top of this container. That's because liquids do not spread out to take up the container's entire volume. And solids keep their shape. They do not take the shape of their container, and they do not spread out across the container's volume. So you can see that all of these pieces of aluminum are keeping their shape. Just like these balls of wood, and steel and glass are also keeping their shape and volume. They're the same size and shape after you put them in the container that they were before they were in the container. The physical state of a substance can be changed by changing the temperature of the substance. So I can change a substance from being a solid to a liquid to a gas by heating it up. And I can change it from a gas to a liquid to a solid by cooling it down. When solids are heated up, they melt into liquids. So the picture shows ice, which is solid water, melting into liquid on a hot summer day. As the temperature increases, the solid turns into a liquid. When liquids are cooled down, they freeze into solids. Freezing liquid water turns it into solid ice. And here you can see that I poured some water into a mold and then put that into the freezer. And when the temperature decreased enough, that water froze into solid ice. When liquids are heated up, they evaporate into gases. So here you can see that I poured some water on some hot concrete. As the temperature of that water increased, the water evaporated and went into the air. When a liquid disappears like this, it's probably because it warmed up and evaporated. When gases are cooled down, they condense into liquids. So here I have a cold bottle, and shortly after I take that cold bottle out of the refrigerator, droplets form on the bottle. The condensation that appears in the cold bottle is water vapor from the air that cooled down. So there is water vapor in the air all around you, and when it hits something cold, like a cold glass, then it turns from a gas into a liquid. And that's why you get droplets of water on something that's cold. Condensation happens when water vapor cools down and turns into a liquid. So evaporation of warm water creates water vapor. But as the water vapor hits the lid and cools back down, it condenses into droplets of water. The melting point of water is zero degrees Celsius. This means that no matter how much ice there is, it will melt when it warms up to zero degrees Celsius. Now it's important that you understand this is not about how much time it takes for the ice to melt. So it may take more time for the ice that's in the large beaker to melt than it would for the ice that's in the small beaker. But as all of the ice melts in all three of these beakers, it will be melting at the same temperature. And so they'll all be at the temperature of zero degrees Celsius as they melt. Zero degrees Celsius is also the freezing point of water. So any amount of water will freeze when cooled down to zero degrees Celsius. 
The boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. This means that no matter how much water there is, it will boil when it warms up to 100 degrees Celsius. So once again, this is not about how much time it takes, and it may take more time to heat up the large beaker of water than it would take to heat up the small beaker of water. But when all three of these beakers start to boil, they will all be at the temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. I hope this video has helped you understand the states of matter a little bit better. Keep up the great work. I'll see you next time.